Recent deep sequencing efforts have revealed that many microorganisms exhibit biogeographical patterns, forming distinct communities across the Earth. This is a core principle of our recent paper, Microbial Invasions, the Process, Patterns, and Mechanisms, published this month in Trends in Microbiology. Such heterogeneity allowed us to picture microbes within an ecological invasion framework, where communities of microbes are susceptible to invasion by other non-indigenous species. I'm Shona Salas. And I'm Cyrus Mallon. In our review paper, we show that invasions are common to many subfields of microbiology, like agricultural, medical, and environmental. For instance, an invasion can be classified as contracting an infection, the application of biofertilizers, or even the use of bacterial probiotics. Common to all of these examples is the introduction of a microorganism that is transported into a new environment or community where it's never before existed. By analyzing such studies, we were able to piece together a larger story. And in our paper, we show how invasions appear to follow a universal process that's defined by the introduction, establishment, growth and spread, and impact of an invader. So to illustrate this process, let's take a case study that we examine in our review. We'll need a cow, the land it lives upon, and the bacterium Escherichia coli. E. coli is a harmless commensal to many vertebrates, and it's frequently introduced into the soil by way of fecal shedding, and this begins the first phase of invasion. Introduction In order for E. coli to continue its lineage and persist over evolutionary time, it has to get taken up by a new host, perhaps by surviving long enough in the soil so that it can get into the food supply. Alternatively, it could also complete a successful invasion into the soil. A key barrier to a successful invasion is gaining access to vital resources, and the ability to maintain a viable population until resources become available defines the establishment phase. If E. coli's population does not become extinct in the soil, any kind of disturbance, like a sudden increase of temperature or rainfall, may cause an influx of resources, and this may allow E. coli to grow. By growing and spreading, it enters the third phase of the framework, and has therefore successfully invaded this new environment. This growth leads us to the last phase, the impact, during which the invader might affect the resident community, for instance, by displacing indigenous microbial species. In our review, we examine each phase of the invasion process in more detail, and we weave what we know so far about this phenomenon into the current microbiological and ecological theory. Switching gears, the latter part of our review focuses on the patterns and the mechanisms of microbial invasions. We were able to reveal a general pattern where resident communities with high levels of microbial diversity better resisted invasion than those that were less diverse. This is called the diversity invasion effect. The mechanism behind this effect relies on the fact that more diverse communities better exploit available resources than less diverse communities. The resulting low level of resources in highly diverse communities makes the possibility of invasion very low. However, should resources become available, say perhaps due to some kind of disturbance, the chance of invasion will again increase. The value of these new concepts is that they offer a promising framework to improve many practical applications like biofertilizers and probiotics, because the survival and effectiveness of such agents is often compromised by the high diversity of the natural microbial communities found in the environments they are introduced. By incorporating and identifying what resources may be crucial to an invader's survival, we can search for, or perhaps engineer, microbes with effective ecological strategies that allow things like displacement of gut pathogens or even long-lasting plant growth promotion effects.